Hello, my name is Krishna Kumar. This is module 2 for the extra first class marine engineering examination as per the Government of India syllabus uh, prescribed by the D Directory General of Shipping. My name is Krishna Kumar, a naval architect, former ship surveyor with DNV and Indian Register of Shipping. This module is about stability and it's the second module as per the syllabi for prescribed. What we will be talking essentially are three things related to stability. One is the intact stability, another aspect is the dynamic stability and the third is the damage stability. And there are various aspects of stability which I will touch upon. Now in the first module I mentioned that in the design brief the most important aspect for a naval architect is to establish the ship the ship's form which should have sufficient reserve buoyancy and stability. Both buoyancy and stability are rely on the Archimedes principles of what makes a vessel float and, and a rotational writing ability of a floating vessel. Unlike a land uh, vessel which is on a fixed wheel with friction helping, the, the, sh the any object on the water has a, got a writing, uh, it writes by itself. And there's an inherent principle which makes, a, makes the ships right. And that is the basis for the stability. Let us explore that a little bit more further. So there are two aspects of the stability. One it relates to the transverse stability, which relates to rolling of the ship. And the other relates to the trim and the pitching of the ship. Both of these happen because the center of gravity and the center of buoyancy are not in line. When they are in line, of course, they, are, they stay with even uh, position of either, you know, heel or trim. But because there is, but at the same time, these differences also cause them to come back. Now, for instance, if there is a difference here, this moment causes it to come back into the right position. So, what these differences also help in bringing the ship back to the right position. So that is the concept through a meta center, which is an imaginary point around which the vessel starts rotating. So that is the basic principles behind stability. And there are certain dimensions which are critical in terms of calculations of stability. So they call it kg, gm, you, uh, you must be all familiar with this. Essentially, the metacentric height depends on a calculation which is between the center of buoyancy. It's a geometrical uh, calculation because it is calculated by this formula, it by displacement, uh, depending on the level of the water line, the flotation, the displacement, and the second moment of the area on of the water line, you calculate the position of the meta center. There is a mathematical calculation. Now, of course, they are computerized. So the BM positions are known, and these are used for the various calculations. And the, so essentially from a mariner's point of view, this boss, uh, the po position of meta center is already fixed when you have a ship designed, the buoyancy also to some extent. So what you can only vary is the position of center of gravity. So the whole issue, the problem of stability is on how to handle the center of gravity vis-a-vis -vis the ship's inherent qualities. So that is the issue of stability from a practical mariner's point of view. To make this very simple, the stability booklet contains what is known as a GEZ representation. The GEZ curve is called the writing lever, which is a simplified view of what brings makes a ship come back. So these are plotted over angles of heel and the, these curve look like this. There is at some point of time uh, when a vessel heals, after which possibly the deck is immersed and then the vessel capsizes. So after that, the GZ curve, if you plot it over a heel, after some time the vessel becomes unstable. So there is, the, 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 uh, the, the capsize can take place because from there the GZ is coming down on this part of it. So the vessel, generally if you are operating the vessel at these levels of heel, that means your upsetting moments are taking you to, to about 30, 40 to 50 degrees, 40 degrees, you are more or less, you will be 
there is enough residual stability to bring you back. But vessels can capsize if your waves are too much or you there are other causes of why you have hit another object or hit on the bottom. There could be many reasons why vessels can capsize. There is also a, a relationship with the general the GM to the comfort on a ship. If you have a very high GM, which means good for stability, but the period of ro uh, rolling will be very stiff. It will be very uncomfortable living in a ship like that. And this can happen if your G is very low and your GM is very high. Uh, it is good for stability, but it's certainly not good for livability. At the same time, you could have uh, GM is small, it's not good for stability, but you have a long period of roll. It's a very comfortable to be on board such ships. So there is a, was the position of the G is totally under the control of the master because they load the load the ship in various forms with various cargo. So you have control over that. So it is up to the and it is dynamic. Naval architects check this across varying conditions of loading, and it is contained in the stability booklet which you can check. There are also some conditions like a negative role you can have in some conditions uh, a lolling situation again it depends on the position of the G and M that the meta center can come below the level so then you the ship might list to one side so these are practical things and these are fundamental principles which can be managed while along the voyage there could be other tricky situation with respect to stability is the eyes on deck because you have load on the higher side raising your G. You could have heavy cargo stored on deck. You could have empty tanks at the bottom of the hull because these empty tanks at the bottom of the hull or you have free water, liquid free surface at the bottom of the vessel because free surfaces reduce your GM and if they are sloshing around they have a inertia effect, free surface effect and for instance if you look here there is the uh, a large transverse tank while here you can see they are subdivided so the effect of on the stability on the subdivided tank will be much less compared to this one so it is better to have a, a, a longitudinal partition on a tank so that's why most of the ships have got longitudinal partitions at the keel or sideways so that the transversely they reduce the uh, reduce the span of the to limit the free surface and there are certain free surface corrections to be uh, to be applied another way of depiction in the cross is the cross curves of stability because these things are available on board for the master to take the right decisions so the gz curve is a fundamental tool for stability and what is the angle of heel so the ship in the various angles of heel the gz curve is depicted over here and this can be done for various displacements at various levels of immersion you can calculate this because the buoyancy will change the, the water plane areas are different so and these are represented into cross curves which show the angle of heel here the displacement here and the GZ here so these are quick references for the master to see in uh, uh, at, at what angle of heel how, how the stability is etc so in a way the cross curves though it looks like this it is actually if you look at it in a three dimensional plot it is a GZ curve plotted uh, across varying displacements so you can view it as a three dimensional plot also and the angles of heel is what uh, goes in here so we are more people are more interested in the positive aspect before the stability goes down now from a rule point of view there is the area under the GZ curve is one of the criteria given by the IMO. Similarly there is a wind healing moment. The intact stability is a natural writing ability but you could have gust of wind or certain things which causes the heel of the vessel. You put that across the healing moments into the GZ curve and see the plotting areas and look at the residual area here which which gives you uh, whether the vessel can write itself back so there are dynamic stability calculations where wind healing moments prescribed by the rules are also checked to see if 
the vessel will write itself in, in these conditions. So these are also calculated by naval architects and it's part of the stability calculation submitted. And so you look at the various downflooding, uh, down flooding angle is an important angle because this is when you have a decade immersion and water can come into through some openings. So that is why in the load line calculation it is very important to check certain closing appliances and their uh, 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 so that water doesn't go get into the compartments and thereby increase the uh, the stability can be reduced and impacted and so many things can happen. So another aspect is the damage stability. In the first module we did discuss about the damage stability and the damage stability relates to floodable length and the positioning of compartments with respect to the reserve buoyancy but stability is also an important factor to consider because when the flooded water comes in either it, it changes the characteristics of your uh, stability characteristic the gz curve is altered the gm position is altered so you have to check the damage stability also and there are rules on which this is uh, checked and there are two ways in which this is done one is these are theoretical methods on which this is done one is you consider that these compartments are open to the sea and they are no more contributing to buoyancy. So when you take a position called the loss buoyancy method, then the calculations of the, G, the GM is altered because you have lost your buoyancy there. So you make those corrections and with the lost buoyancy method you do the calculation. But finally you are looking at the impact on the, the, the trim, the heel and the GM. Or you can have an added weight method by which you can think that the flooded seawater which has come in is actually causing a higher displacement and a new draft, the ship immerses and now you can, a new draft comes in and you can calculate the GM for this new draft. Either way you have to see that in both these uh, conditions whether the residual uh, GM and GEZ is suitable and that the curves are understood and these are also checked at the early design stage and it's part of the design approval the stability calculations in terms of uh, damage stability. So you would, can appreciate that these geometric characteristic of a ship makes it comfortably survive very hostile sea conditions. You can see these container ships going in heavy sea weather and they always ride back. In general, the ships do, if, if, the, if the GM is sufficient, if the GZ curve is under control, most of the ships are able to write and come back even during heavy seas, which I'm sure many of you had experience. But it is not uncommon that ships do capsize. Many of the time the capsize stories can happen when they are coming near the shore and uh, there could be some grounding, there could be certain uh, collisions, then you can have a situation whereby these, though there is a tendency to think that this is a stability problem, it need not necessarily be an inherent intact stability problem. It could be either a damage stability problem or it could be do a modified because during these kind of situations uh, many things happen which is, which is important to appreciate. But at the same time, if you see this last picture here, this certainly is a kind of a ship which is listing. So there is a management of the weights along the way. So maybe this is a vessel which is lo uh, having a lull because of certain distribution of weights around or maybe there is a tank flooded. Now another important aspect in stability is to understand the impact of a ship grounding, stranding or if a ship is capsized you want to salvage them. Of course the first principle is when a vessel touches on the ground somewhere then everything alters it is no more a vessel floating. So the first thing must be to float the vessel before you start doing anything to write it and use the natural writing lever curves. Many often during these kind of situations the ships capsize because you can see here this is the force which is uh, due to a contact at the bottom and it has an impact on the G and the buoyancy. It, it alters the complete geometry and the whole calculations. So 
it is no more a, a, a limited to a stability issue because this is limited to a, a lot of reaction forces coming from the contact. So very often when these situations happen you need expert uh, help in salvage operations but of course the fundamental principle is always to float the vessel first. Many often in inland waterways you see these things, these boats which ply normally very well suddenly can capsize. So the first thing one has to check is was there any contact anywhere or because these are shallow waters and look at this ship has capsized totally in a port. It sounds uh, strange because there were no other uh, upsetting moments here, no waves, no nothing but it capsized. So what made it do that? It is to due to the reaction forces which comes from the, from the bottom most likely. So the first step to go and investigate is what caused it. Then of course you have to write it back. Then uh, Now in this particular case of course maybe you need a crane to lift it back. Another very important aspect of stability is the inclining experiment. So before a stability booklet is finalized it is important to know when the ship is constructed where what is the position of the center of gravity because when the ship is constructed still there are many weights to come in, many weights to go off. But you need a good approximation of where the center of gravity is so that you, your design center of gravity and your actual center of gravity are corrected and you make the corrected final stability booklet. So essentially what is done in an inclining experiment is two weights are, it could be not two, more weights, more weights are moved across and with a pendulum you check the angle of heel and there are calculations by which because you know the form of the vessel what is the position of GM, the meta center. And these are done over two, three sections in a, in a, in a, in a close water. So what you see here is a pendulum here which is what measures the angle of heel uh, and they are calibrated, there are standards for that and the weights are moved, calibrated weights here, weights must be measured kept and moved and the seawater density is measured because depending on the seawater density of the port on which you are doing the immersion might have an impact on that because density plays an important role on the position of the uh, of the uh, immersion level because normally you do at seawater but maybe the water level is more fresh water where you are looking so to get your G position correctly you have to have all these measured and and it is calculated and you must also measure the draft and the freeboard and check it with the theoretical calculations. So the inclining experiment is a very important part of the uh, stability uh, work of done by naval architects and shipyards. So this comes to the close of this section 2 on stability. So we have covered uh, most of the aspects here. Uh, one aspect which possibly I missed out was about the effect of lifting it's very simple when you lift a heavy load using a crane your C, C, G position goes up so naturally when heavy weights are lifted your GM becomes, uh, uh, becomes less so you have got lesser stability and so hence especially if you do an offshore operations these are important to consider. And uh, we touched about the cross curves of stability, the dynamic stability and I hope uh, with this knowledge and uh, I would recommend you to strongly go and look at a stability booklet on board. In some cases of bulk carriers there are grain loading booklets where grain shifts in a bulk cargo. So there are certain other variants which could be there depending on the ship types. There are shifting boards to prevent grain from moving. It's almost like a free surface effect. So you put in shifting boards on the cargo hold to prevent the grain from moving and uh, these are also connected with the stability uh, problem on the ship. Thank you very much.